In this video, I'm going to show you a really fantastic recipe for what I like to call um, pumpkin pie custard. And I'm going to also show you a lot of different variations you can do. And I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this one. Again, like all my other recipes, um, I really key in on total simplicity um, so that it's quick, easy, and there's just not a ton of ingredients or a lot of time involved, but you will definitely enjoy the results of your efforts. So for this recipe, you're basically going to be steaming a mixture um, that is egg-based, and um, you're gonna be making it in a pot that you have a lid for, and in that, you're gonna put some sort of trivet, so something that you're gonna lay in the bottom of the pot because you're gonna put another um, uh, baking, baking type dish on top of this that's going to steam your custard. So in my pan, I have about, um, maybe about three quarters of an inch of water I lay the trivet in there, get the water boiling, and now we're gonna mix up our custard mixture. All right, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is the, um, the container that you're gonna to use to make this in. Um, many people will make it actually in sort of like a whole pie plate and um, heat up water in a, I guess, 12 inch um, saute pan, fry pan that has a lid. Um, or you can, uh, and of course the amount of ingredients is going to vary based on what size containers you're going to use. So I'm going to give you the gist of what I do and I'm going to show you just some examples of, um, I picked up these cute little, um, they're like, I guess ceramic, um, uh, little baking dishes. So. I have four of these, so you can make individual ones for people if you're having um, carnivore guests or your family. Um, you can make it in something like this. Again, these are all, I'll just give you um, size-wise, these are sort of, um, you know, small um, little individual baking um, crocks. So, depending on what you do is really gonna depend on the amount of your ingredients. The basic recipe is what I'm gonna give you below and I'm gonna show you um, the, the rule of thumb really is equal amount of egg and heavy whipping cream. So in this case, I'm going to make, um, I think this is gonna make two of these. Uh, so it is. it works out to be a half a cup of um, heavy whipping cream to um, two large eggs, which when you crack the two eggs into um, a measuring vessel, it is about a half a cup. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio of egg to heavy cream. Now you can substitute water and you can um, substitute part water and part heavy whipping cream. So play around with it and find your favorite um, um, version of how you make it. So. I'm gonna do mine right now with one-to-one -one heavy whipping cream and eggs, and I'm gonna also show you what else I put into it um, as soon as I get this cracked in. And you can mix it in a number of ways. So I'm gonna show you a couple things that I have. Um, one thing that I really like is one of these little tiny hand mixers, which um, work really well. It comes with a frothing end, so you can froth heavy cream for your coffee, also this mixing end. So I'm gonna show you first how I make the pumpkin pie version, and then I'm gonna talk about um, how to vary it in the most amazing ways. And you're gonna, be, you're gonna be able to use this base recipe in so many different ways for so many different uses. So um, the first thing is um, pumpkin pie spice or whatever version of five spice, all spice, but I find pumpkin pie spice is pre-blended in a really nice combination. So a quarter teaspoon of that. 
and then a little um, vanilla extract. I do an eighth of a teaspoon of that. I'll put the recipe in the show notes. And a tablespoon of ghee. So let me grab that. I'll be right back. Okay, I grabbed my ghee, and you're going to put a tablespoon of um, the ghee. If it's room temperature, it's fine. It's that real kind of like soft, gelatinous consistency. Um, if you keep yours in the fridge then, and it's solid, then you're going to want to soften it um, in, in your microwave or leave it out to soften. So I'm going to put in the tablespoon of ghee and... Before I mix that up, because that's really all there is to it, um, I'm just going to talk about some of the variations that are so really amazing to be able to make. So what I use for different variations is um, I get these um, Capella flavoring drops and they're um, in the link to my Amazon store. Just go to my kitchen and cooking favorites. And these things are amazing. There's no sweetener, no sugars, um, nothing other than an intense um, flavoring. So you're putting um, drops of this into your whatever dish or coffee, or um, I'll tell you other ways to use it. But um, I have a coconut, I have toasted almond. So um, using again, the equal amounts of egg and heavy whipping cream, um, this version I might make is I take the toasted almond and I put 15 drops of that in and um, ground cardamom and I'll do a combination of that. Or um, they also have a New York cheesecake um, flavoring. So you can just do um, the, the cheesecake and I actually think they have, oh, they do, they have a cherry. So if you wanna make cherry cheesecake, do um, the cheesecake drops and some cherry drops, or they have strawberry. Um, they have a peppermint one, they have a graham cracker one, they have a peaches and cream. Um, so just imagine that the same custard um, and just do peaches and cream um, in there. And then you can even top it with a little um, whipped heavy whipping cream with vanilla extract um, on the top. And these are kind of fun things to do for um, birthdays, for um, uh, keto people, carnivore people in your life, um, if you want to celebrate with some sort of treat. Um, I know some hardcore carnivores are just like, well, just put candles in the steak and that's all well and good. But there's times where you really would like um, some sort of um, different type of treat. So uh, the other thing that I'm gonna tell you is um, with ghee. I have two different types of ghee, other than my regular plain um, ghee that I use in a lot of recipes and cooking. Um, I found and absolutely love these two products. And again, there's a link in the kitchen and cooking favorites in my Amazon store. Um, but this one is called Grass Fed Ghee. That's the name of the company. Uh, well, actually it's Gourmet Ghee Company. And this one is infused with cinnamon. and I know a lot of you will write and say, well, you could just do ghee and the cinnamon, but I'm telling you, it is like a world of difference somehow having the um, cinnamon infused and in this ghee, um, amazing to put into um, coffee. I take this same um, hand um, whip with the frothing attachment and I'll do this uh, cinnamon ghee with, um, uh, the heavy whipping cream and froth that up and uh, sometimes as a treat I will put that in my decaf espresso or decaf coffee. Um, the other one is by Forth and Heart. This is a different company than that one. I haven't been able to find any other companies that make this but um, this is a vanilla bean. Both of these are grass-fed um, clarified um, butter, the ghee. And this one has vanilla bean. And again, I get it. You can just use plain ghee and your vanilla extract. But in my experience, in my opinion, um, number one, the ease of this to not have to pull out the vanilla extract and say, oh, 
I just have this on my counter and um, sometimes I will throw it in, like I said, I'll whip it in with my heavy whipping cream um, if I do make a coffee. Um, or in some other recipes like these custards, it's a great, um, delicious addition. So that's um, alter alternate things you can do. This um, company that I also told you I have a lot of these different um, flavors linked into my um, Amazon favorites. They also make a one called chocolate fudge brownie. Now I know this could be triggering for some people, uh, but again, no sweeteners, no sugars. It's just that hint of flavor. And it's just that little bit that you want to sometimes feel like you're um, kind of treating yourself. They also make a pina colada. So you can make this custard with um, this pina colada flavoring. And uh, it it's really kind of fun to play with this. And for those of you who love to do recipes, um, I think this is a fun thing to do aside from grilling the meat. Okay, so um, I think I also have this little gadget in my um, favorites because it definitely is one of my favorite things. It has um, three speed settings. And basically just um, whipping that up and then I'm going to just butter the dish and pour this in and show you how we make the custard. Okay, so the water's boiling, the trivet's in there. We're just going to set our custard right into the pan. All right, so we have the mixture set into the bottom there. And when you cover it, let it vent a tiny bit. Don't seal it all the way off. That way, um, the moisture that might drip off the top of the um, pan is not dripping into your custard. Some of the moisture can escape, but you're still getting the steam effect. Okay, now I am going to talk about the tricky thing with the timing. And don't get so caught up in it, and hopefully this doesn't derail you, um, because I'm not going to give you an exact time because it really varies on um, whether you're doing the water or the heavy cream, um, the size of your container. And I'm gonna just tell you I what I do for this little size. I set it for 10 minutes. Um, I check it around eight. All you're really looking for, and I'll show you um, um, in this next um, part of the video, um, how I just really uh, just tap the center of it and if nothing comes, no you know liquid uh, custard comes up onto my fingertip, then I know that it's done. Okay, we're at eight minutes in now, so I'm just gonna show you how I test it. So I can already see that center is not done, but if you take the back of a spoon and you touch it and it comes up like that, then you know it's not done. So you're gonna end up getting your own um, timing on your size uh, baking dish. Okay, so this actually went in about um, 12 minutes. You can just see a little bit of that ghee on the top, but um, this is, I'm gonna, pretty much firm all the way around. You're seeing it's not coming up on there. So that's the best way to tell that it's done. All right, and um, just for fun, so here is um, the finished pumpkin pie custard, but just for fun, I'm gonna show you like what you might want to do special for um, some sort of holiday or event, but I have a little um, heavy cream there. I'm just gonna add couple drops of vanilla extract. And then I'm gonna take um, one of my flavoring drops. This is a apple, apple pie um, drops. And I'm gonna throw in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna throw 10 drops in there. And um, 
blend this up into some heavy cream, whipped cream. All right, I'm just gonna show you how I just make a little bit of whipped cream right here in a cup. So I had fun making a little bit of some whipped cream and in my whipped cream, remember I put a little vanilla extract and I happen to use the apple pie flavoring drops and just putting that here onto the pumpkin pie custard and I hope you enjoy this. If you like this recipe and others that I do, go ahead and click the subscribe button and be sure to get notified when my next recipe comes out. So, you know, my favorite part of my cooking videos is when I get to sample them and uh, I think you'll be pleased with this. You have to remember your first instant thought is wanting and craving that taste of sweet. There is no sweet but really delicious treat and I really think you're going to enjoy it so give it a try and let me know what you think. So good. Seriously.